Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Mullins Over Music podcast. I'm your host, as always, Austin Mullins. And this week's guest, we have the drummer from Deadlands, Kyle. Great dude. Met him at Blue Ridge. Got a picture with him and the rest of the band and my wife and I. Uh, We've chatted ever since then, and I managed to get him on the podcast. So I hope you guys enjoy the show. As always, I'm ready to see content with your SJC drums, which we'll get to shortly. But, yes, uh, I'll, uh, yeah. I wish I could tell you then. They're up. We have a, a big show coming up, so they are packed up right now. That's the uh, Alpha Wolf Motionless and White to, uh, show, right? Yes, it is. We're so excited to play it. I wish it was closer to me. I'd be right there in the front row. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Where you out of? Uh, I'm in North Carolina. Okay. So we'll uh we'll yeah. down there next year. So. Well, that's good. I'm excited to see you guys again. Oh yeah. Because I saw you guys at Blue Ridge. Didn't get a chance to go to Louder Than Life. It was, it's an unfortunate event. The the whole thing was kind of unfortunate, but uh. The day we played, it it was it was a good day for us. Just like going out, playing to like the crowd we played to, they were really, really like energetic. They they gave us a their all, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Plus, it was great to meet you guys. My wife was very glad to have met you guys, and I was too. Oh, nice. We felt bad. We got cut down a little short with the meet and greet, so we just took that one group photo with everyone at the end. But it was like. So nice getting to meet everyone. Yeah. So let me hear a fun fact about you, and then I got a, a fun question to get the podcast started off with. Um, fun, fun fact about me is when I'm not playing drums, I'm a full-time insurance broker, something not many people would just think of when they, like, see me. It definitely surprised me. That is... <laughs> so... My question, you got to start off every podcast with a silly question. How do you like your coffee? How do I like my what? Coffee. Oh, um, I would say very light and sweet. I don't drink much coffee at all. Um, It's usually extra cream, extra sugar. It's usually a flavored, whatever, berry, caramel, something like that. Um, So light and sweet. Just choked on mine. <laughs> I hope you're all right. I'm good. I like coffee the same way. Although, recently I've been getting into Death Wish coffee. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, if I'll ever get over it going down the wrong pipe, I love it. Mm -hmm. So, tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me about Long Island, where you're from. Um, I'm from Long Island. Um, I'm from Eastern Long Island, a uh, little small town called Matterville. It's not big at all. Um, I like going to the city a lot for live music. Uh, Long Island's not really known for the live music scene, for the music I'm into as much, like metal scene, punk scene. Um, so I, I spend probably two or three days a week in the city just going to see live music. Uh, whether it's smaller bands or like more mainstream bands. Uh, yeah. Recently, like Bad Omens are a bigger band, a little voice track there. 
Um, saw Bad Omens recently. I've seen Don Broco recently, Silverstein, I've seen Dayseeker recently. So a lot of bands do come through New York. Um, but I like the city a lot. Dang, pizza. Man. Pizza. Oh, we're, I got a question about that. Um, but I love all those bands you're talking about. It, you're, man, I'm jealous because I was wanting to see Bad Omens again. I saw them when they were on tour with uh, Spirit Box and Under Oath. Mm -hmm. Fantastic time. Wow, that, that's an insane lineup. Yeah, it was Stray from the Path, who's also, I believe they're from Long Island too. Yeah, all right. Um, which I, I do have a fun question, real quick. It's completely off topic. Do you say radiator or radiator? I guess I would say radiator. I, I don't know. You got me tripped up on that. I'll find a slang for that. Yeah, because uh, I was listening to the Downbeat podcast with Craig Reynolds from Stray from the Path, and he had the, the guitar player on there, and he said, Drew, you always says radiator. And I was like, is that a Long Island thing? Then I listened to the Finn McKinty podcast. Same thing. They had somebody else on. Yeah, well, I want to say that's how I would have said it. Like, if I was just saying it, I don't know. I feel like that's not a word, like, that's been in my vocabulary for, for years since I've been in, like, an industrial building or something like that. Yeah. Um, ratty. Yeah, probably radiator. Okay. It it must be a, a New York, Long Island thing, because I say radiator, and I, I had to ask. That didn't sound wrong. So, Long Island, you know, history of great bands coming from there. You guys, for one, stray from the path. Tell me about growing up. Tell me what you like to bang on when you're a little kid. If it was a pot, what was your favorite pot to bang on? Specifically, you know, those, uh, besides just pots and pans, because those are boring, it's specifically that blue cookie tin with the... Uh, all the like the the butter cookies i think they're called yes um specifically that i had a bunch of those because my grandma would always get us those cookies so it was a bunch of those pots and pans and that's how i started playing drums i would i would be banging on that and my dad got way too sick of the noise and he was like we're gonna get you a real drum teacher a real drum set and that was like my christmas gift that year i was 10 years old um that that was more so what I used to like play on growing up right before a drum set was just that or a rock band drum set. And then growing up, I was into a lot of weird stuff. I played hockey. I played volleyball. I played soccer. I, I ride dirt bikes and quads. Um, I played, yeah, I played a lot of sports. I like to dirt bike ride a lot. I love to swim. I have a pool. Um, that was always fun. I've got a pool in my backyard too. It's filled with leaves at the moment, but <laughs> oh no, it's Mine's a close them during ninety percent of the year because mm -hmm. it's our weather is like hot, 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 cold, hot, cold, hot, 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 cold for about a week where it snows and then back to warm again. Mm -hmm. I know you probably don't get as much time in the swimming pool as we do. We get maybe let's see. Three and a half, maybe four months tops. I think we open it like May, actually, maybe June. It's like late May, early June, and it gets closed like late August, September ish. Um, so yeah, maybe three or four months, hey. give or take. We keep it open later. I think this year we closed it earlier. Gotcha. So, uh, did you play anything else besides drums or? Were you always passive instrument? So I grew up playing like drum set, and then once I was in high school, I did like wind on wind ensemble, uh, percussion ensemble. So it was like strictly just snare drum or timpanis or uh, xylophone. Um, so oh, an array of percussive instruments, but mainly like drums. Drum set is is like my forte. Gotcha. So if I put a timpani in front of you and told you to do a timpani solo you you could break it I, out right then and there that was my favorite things to do you uh you change the tuning with your foot and everything it's 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 a cool instrument it's very fun it is i used to call it a timpani 
when I was <laughs> three or four up until I was like seven. And then my music teacher, uh, his name was Mr. Plant, ironically. <laughs> taught music, didn't, didn't care about it. Uh, he said, no, it's Tim Pa me. And I was like, why does it matter? And he was like, because it does. And I was like, oh, <laughs> fair enough. Since we're on the topic of you and where you're from, and since you brought up pizza and it's around dinner time, I'd say. Do you prefer New York pizza? Like, or do you prefer like Chicago? Is it always been, is New York have a special place in your heart as the best place, the king of pizza? Yeah. Long, Long Island or New York, like the city specifically, like any anywhere in that re like I, I'm very far east on Long Island. I'm not like close to the city, so I don't get city pizza a lot. Yeah. Um, but like around Long Island, you can go at any time and you're going to get a good slice of pizza. Um, I typically don't eat it outside of New York. It's also because it's something we do eat very often. It's it's always local. It's always going to be hot, fresh, whatever. So we get it a lot. So it's not something I would go out of state to get normally. But for places I've gone out and tried it, like I have a lot of friends and family in Connecticut. They always say some slices are better, but I would disagree personally. Um, I like to stand by the New York slice, but. That's yeah, fair, man. I, I love a New York slice. My aunt lived up in New Jersey for a long time. So we always came up, visited, went to the city, went to Long Island a couple times and always got some of the best pizza there. Hands down. Everywhere I look, I try to find like how Deadlands got started, how, how you got in Deadlands, you know, how you met Casey, how you met CJ. Um, Tell me a little bit about that. Cause I can't find it anywhere. Um, Basically, me and CJ, uh, we like the, I first had met him like before Casey. We played in a band many years ago, um, and I hadn't seen him for years after that. Like no bad blood. Like I just yeah. we live and talked. I went to college, um, so I was in college. And right when I came home from college, I graduated in December of 2019. Um, and short after that, um, at a Nothing Nowhere show, I reconnected with Casey and CJ. Um, after me and CJ had been in a band, uh, he had stayed home. I went to college. Um, him and Casey, I don't know how they met each other exactly, um, but I know they played in a band together that also just didn't work out. Um, so we had gone to a Nothing Nowhere concert, just all of us together, not like meaning to and I ran into CJ there he ran into Casey um and we all just connected there so much love big shout out to nothing nowhere that's a huge in inspiration of Deadlands for for all of us individually um but we met there um and we're basically like we should do this so we got uh basically into my basement here and we wrote Crushed which was our first song we recorded most of it in one night down here um and that's kind of history from there that is one of my favorite songs you guys have written by the way thank you that was the first ever thing we ever did uh it was crushed and then we wrote shallow breath a few uh i think days after no. <clears throat> i'm also in my voice i'm a little bit sick so i apologize for that you're good man i was sick for a month so oh, that's I'm just now recovering from being not sick. So yeah, my voice has been kind of shot for about a week, maybe two weeks now. Gotcha. It's it's a lot like coughing though, which is nice. I was I was coughing a lot and I don't like that. Yeah. Are uh the allergies, the sinuses bad up there or I don't know if it's allergies, sinuses, or just like getting a cold. Like I, I got COVID tested, it was all negative on that end, but like, like I said, I go to a lot of shows and stuff like that. Like, it's just a lot of high volume, but places that have a lot of like traffic, a lot of people. Um, I think that's really just what does it, honestly. 
Okay. Yeah, it, it with all those people, you you don't know what people will bring in there and what you'll come. You get sick from work, like family members. Um, you never know where you get sick from, but I I, I blame it on shows a lot. Um, I, but I've done that before. <laughs> I blamed getting sick uh one time on that spirit box under oath tour because I, I was sick for like a week afterward and I couldn't. Mm-hmm out whether it was just work that got me sick or whether it was the show because you know that show it was close to when covid was ending their restrictions and stuff so i don't know if i had covid then or not i got over it in a few days so probably not i got tested it was inconclusive (laughs) it wasn't the first time and it's i've had inconclusive three times now I don't know what that means, but uh, inconclusive. <laughs> exactly. So, tell me your favorite song by Deadlands by you guys. Why? And then tell me your favorite song not by you guys. Ooh, um, my favorite song by us is probably right now House of Cards. It's new. It's it's our our first of many new tracks coming very soon. Um. It's heavy, it's catchy, it's fun to play. Um, from like our older stuff, Sentence of Myself, um, I would say Final Judgment off that EP. That's my favorite song to play. It's heavy, it's underrated, um, it's super catchy. Uh, I love a good circle pit during that song. Oh, yeah. Uh, but a lot of our new music, I would say. Okay. Uh, not out yet we've been playing uh one new song um on our latest tour at blue ridge and at louder than life that's not out yet that might be a favorite we'll see when it comes out it was a favorite of mine i you guys said we're playing this next song it's one that we haven't released yet i'm like gotta pull up my phone here so i can remember this song when it comes out and it was a killer song Uh, not gonna sound like how we played it i'll uh i'll say that we've definitely at when we were on tour and playing those shows that i guess that version of it was still in its early stages we uh we've recorded a lot more to it kind of we've re-recorded it definitely gonna have a similar vibe to it um but expect some big changes to it then i can be one of the first people to have heard it in its original form so i'm excited to hear it in its uh, uh demo baby version of it which is still i love it i i love the original track we had wrote um for tour and stuff honestly because we were going on tour and playing festivals we needed to bring as much as we could we wanted to bring new ideas play new songs see what people liked see what they didn't like um but that was that was as we were writing it so we 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 played it we we had a a good structure to the song but um what uh what you saw be uh a lot different the next time you see it and i hope you love it oh i'm sure i will i've loved all the tracks you guys have done and final judgment i will have to agree with you i think that's my favorite uh off that ep thank you love that song i swear you and i we would have been good band buddies in high school if we had <laughs> high school together. we could have played timpani together there you go Funny enough, I played tuba, so I was always next to, and we we were required to have marching band, so I was mm-hmm. always next to the bass drums on uh and the snare drums when uh we would play on the field or when we were lining up to go onto the field. So, yeah, I think we would have been right next to each other because I was yeah. the tall tuba player, and <laughs> I'm sure you were the tall drummer too. I was. I was I was very tall very early in life. I was probably five eleven from seventh grade on and and then just stayed like a solid six foot after that. Like I, I didn't I didn't grow much after that. I swear, but, you know, it's for guys it's like you're up there and then you may grow a few more inches and then that's it. For girls yeah. it's a it's a great I, I, Two years ago three years ago height wise like i don't think i'm growing anymore i don't think i am either and then in 40 
break down into a little old man. Yeah, walking around it with your drumstick cane so you can yeah. pull out the drumsticks and start banging on the drums and then put it back together and walk off stage. Y- you can coin that idea, by the way. I'll 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 give you some money for the trademark. Okay, that sounds like a plan to me. So I know that you guys take influence, at least based on what your Spotify says, uh, from asking Alexandria, motionless and white, escape the fate, falling in reverse, wage war, and bring me the horizon. But what are some of your personal influences, whether they're specific drummers or whether it's bands in general? I want to hear your um, influences. I always say my top three influence drumming wise. Uh, first, I always give credit to Neil Peart of Rush. He was the reason I picked up sticks in the first place. He was an incredible drummer. Um, just absolutely legendary. He, he had drum sets just around him and doing insane stuff and just growing up. My, my dad loved classic rock and showed me him. And that's where the, the passion first started. Um, my two favorite drummers right now are Travis Barker and Luke Holland. Just same thing with Travis growing up. His drumming was just insane for what he was doing, and he's still doing it now. It's another voice crack because I'm sick. Um, You're good. But uh, Travis Barker, a lot of lot of influence derives directly from him and Luke Holland also. I grew up watching his uh, drum covers when he was doing like like August burns red and Texas in July covers and like in his bedroom basically. And then he basically just grew into this amazing, like massive success. He's, he's drumming for falling in reverse now. And it was incredible watching him like do everything he did. And I attribute a lot of my drumming to him as well. I like, I like being a little flashy, but putting in the work to the, the playing first, the actual drums. And he's got a lot to do with that. I can hear a lot of uh, Travis Barker and Luke Holland in your drumming. Travis Barker has, what do you call it, a certain swag to his uh, drumming that I think you exude pretty well. Yeah, he's he's on another level. I actually just yesterday just got tickets for uh, Blink-182 coming up. I can't wait to see him. I know. You said you got pit tickets? I did. I'll... I'll be right as close to him as i can get that's insane hey i hope you enjoy that concert it's gonna be one of the best of my life for sure so i gotta ask you what 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 do you listen to in terms of i do um a lot of different stuff um in more simple terms my 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 heavier my metalcore bands are generally like the bigger ones in the scene i love Bring Me the Horizon. I love A Day to Remember. Dayseeker has been a, a band that in the last couple of years has really grown on me that they're they're huge inspiration of like our band. We all love Dayseeker. Um, I've been listening to a lot of the new Sleep Token record. Um, got to see them a bunch recently. Uh, play Louder Than Life and Blue Ridge. Um, I listen to a lot of pop punk. I love Movements. Kenny Hoopla's a uh, more up and coming artist. Uh, he just played when we were young fest. That was insane. Um, story so far, neck deep bands like that. Um, and then I listen to like, I don't know, like more, more pop rock, emo rock, like black bear, mod sun, um, even nothing nowhere. He, he started off making more like sad emo type rock music and now does like, metal and it's it's insane um a lot of nothing nowhere Man. all over you yeah. sound like uh sound like my wife's playlist <laughs> uh she loves a lot of neck deep and stuff like that hot mulligan oh, i love hot mulligan I've, I've tickets to see them next month or in december yeah They're, it's we do too uh we're going to we're gonna go see them in december Hell yeah. That band. She was the one that got me into the whole pop punk, you know, emo pop punk type of deal. Cause I was like, I don't know, you know, I don't really care for pop punk all that much. Cause, you know, for a while, 
most of it is I always thought it was like Paramore and you know Paramore is all right but they've got so many different songs that I don't care for than I do care for that I was like I don't know I don't know how I feel about pop punk and then she was like try this and in college really I was it was for funny enough it was for a Halloween show um our school was it wasn't even our school it was um like it was a basically like an off-campus house venue at the time um and they threw really really big shows and they wanted to do a cover show for halloween um so it was like four or five bands all doing it was like a paramore there was a green day there was adele there was uh some classic rock band like i'm blanking on the name um i love that and there's fifth band like five bands all together it was like a big cover night and we all started it like before the semester even had started so we we practiced for for a few months and we played the show and it was the whole basement was just full of people where like we played in the basement people going up the stairs up the first floor it was the whole house was just packed out it was that was a really fun time that was one of my favorite college experiences actually that's that's gotta be pretty fun i mean yeah pl- playing in a because dr- uh, I played a couple Paramore cover songs for a band that didn't last like a month, but uh, we played Misery Business, and I'll tell you what, that's a tough song to play. So you playing a whole set of Paramore songs on the drum is insane. Yeah, it was fun. Now that we're talking about drums, because you know the word drum, that makes sense. Uh, I got to ask you about your SJC endorsement, which congratulations on again. So much. Um, my beautiful SJC kit, unfortunately, is packed away right now. Um, but that all came about. We uh, we were asked to play a festival called Launch Music Festival in Pennsylvania, um, in Lancaster. Um, and the, uh, the whole event was sponsored by SJC, so on all stages were SJC kids. So like when, when Deadlands came and played, I didn't have to bring a drum set. There was just an SJC kit there. Um, little, little did I know, uh, Matt, one of the heads of SJC, he was uh, he was just at the SJC booth sitting by the, the stages and watched all the bands. And um, I had the pleasure of meeting him after. And he basically said he wanted me to play some SJC drums and, I I was so jaw dropped, like hit the floor. I was I was honored. It's always been a dream. Um, so I I happily said yes, and I began working on my kit. Um, I kind of knew exactly what I wanted. Um, in terms of like a color scheme, so we kind of went to work. We designed it, and I got it a few weeks later, and I played it on tour. It's beautiful. It sounds good. Um, and I I couldn't be happier. I I love the kit, man. Uh, when I walked over to the stage at Blue Ridge and I saw it, I was like, and that's a nice kit. <laughs> man. It's I I literally like cry when I see it. It's it's beautiful. And you're with you're uh endorsed by the same company that Jay Weinberg from Slipknot is yes by. So, you're up there with the greats, man, and. Thank you. Um, little weird story. When I was in college, I went to a, a music convention called NAM, uh, National Association of Music Merchants, and they had a whole SJC booth. And if you like, even go on my Instagram right now, my, one of my first posts is me and uh, Tyler of 21 Pilots. Um, I'm sorry, Josh. Uh, me and Josh Dunn of 21 Pilots at the uh, SJC booth. And I got to meet him. Um, I didn't really, I was, I didn't grow up that big into Twenty One Pilots, but I knew exactly who he was. And I was just, I happened to be at the booth checking out drums, and he was doing a signing. So I was like one of the first people that just happened to get to meet him. I got a picture with him. He was super nice, signed a pair of sticks for me. Um, and that's like one of my first Instagram posts is us at the SJC booth, 
and I just wanted a picture there so bad, and I got one with him. Um, and like now I play for them. Uh, it's amazing. That's insane. That is a crazy story to go yeah. meeting a great drummer at the SJC booth to playing in SJC drums at the SJC sponsored event to <laughs> being sponsored by very, SJC. That's very insane. cool. Insane. And it's well deserved, my dude. I Thanks. really think so. The dream come true. Since we're talking about your SJC drum kit. Let's talk specs, cause come on, I I know you want to tell me about your gear. Um, it's all standard except my floor tom. Instead of it being sixteen by sixteen, I got it eighteen by sixteen. Um, and that's the that's you know, there's it's not nothing's very like size wise, nothing's custom or anything like that. Um, it, it's standard. Like I got a I'm I got a fourteen six snare um standard i think it's 12 inch small uh tom and then i got the 18 and 18 by 16 floor tom so it's a bit like wider a bit deeper yeah like it's 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 in a lower register it, it just it's it sounds closer to a bass drum than like a high tuned floor tom which i like i like yeah. when, I, when i'm playing songs like final judgment where there's like tom parts i want that that floor tom to be heavy and i don't know I, i've always just like a, a fatter sound you know lower t- i'm gonna have to agree with you on that it it does give that that oomph to it for a lack of a, a better word or uh, yeah and it easier to hit too <laughs> for sure now tell me about your symbols I, what symbols symbol, you that's the craziest part about my drum set i am not endorsed by any cymbal company so i would love to be i use basically all the major brands um my hi-hats and my two crashes are zildjian cymbals i use 14 inch hi-hats i use a 16 inch uh fast crash and then just a 17 inch uh crash on my my right side but i also do like another setup it's not what i have now I also really love just a standard 17 on my left and a standard 18 on my right. Um, just like 17 inch crash, 18 inch crash. Um, I really like that setup with Zildjian, like the hi hats, the two symbols. Um, as far as a China, my China is a minor China. Um, mine is, I want to say it's 17 inches. I do apologize again, all my, my uh, like actual drums are packed away right now for the show. Um, it's I think a sixteen or a seventeen inch china. It is a bigger china. Yeah. Um, I use a, uh, I believe it's called a medium bell on top of it. It's that silver bell. It's what you hear in Final Judgment. Um, it's just got a big ping to it. Um, and my ride symbol, which I haven't used on tour played a show with yet is a Peisty blue bell ride. It's Stuart Copeland's custom ride symbol. It's like my holy bell of ride symbols. I don't I don't like to bring it out much because it, it means a lot to me. It's just like I love it. Um but I probably will bring it out to shows just to show it off. It's it's literally a blue symbol. Um it's got a huge bell on it. It cuts through like big, big rooms and it's it's really nice. Um, it's just like my prized possession, so I don't, I don't, I don't it up too much. But that's my ride symbol I use. I like it, man. Um, I'm gonna hit you up for a picture in about a a week or two. Heck yeah! So, uh, be on the lookout for a message from me saying, "Hey, let me see what that symbol looks like." Of course, I uh, I definitely have pictures of it too. I could probably get you that okay. sooner than. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Hey. One of you guys out there, companies, hit him up. He's not sponsored I'm, by I'm, any symbol companies, so they're all great companies. I love Zildjian, I love Minel, I love Sabian. Even I don't, I don't have any Sabian symbols right now. I've had them in the past. Um, I love Heisty, um, but they're they're all they're all great companies. You know, I used to think it was called Pasty, and I was like, um, I. It might be. I think it's interchangeable. I think I've heard people say pasty. I say feisty. 
you know, I like the way you say it better. So I'm going to start saying it like that because pasty just sounds like something you'd slap on yourself. And uh, I don't want people to get the wrong idea when I'm saying, oh, yeah, I got a pasty symbol, you know, but great brand. I, I'd love to play for any of them. They all make amazing symbols. I do play a, a variety of them for a reason. Yeah. And then what sticks are you rocking? Sticks I'm very particular about. Um, right now, it's a Vader 5A and a Vader 5B, depending on if I'm playing a show or practicing. Um, I like the 5As for when I practice. Um, they just, I don't know, I just like to practice with them. They they just feel better for a longer period of time, in my opinion. Um, and for, for playing a show, I will always play a 5B. It's a little thicker of a stick. Um, so they, they tend to break a little bit less. Um, but I, I love Vader and I also play Vic Firth, um, interchangeable. I, I love both brands. I'll, I'll play either of them. Um, I'm not as picky with sticks. Um, like I'll, 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 I'll play a seven a, it, it doesn't matter what the size is so much, but when, when I play, I'll, I'll, I'll go for a 5A or a 5B. I like 5As too uh and 5Bs. They they got a feel to it that the 7As, I don't know if it's just me, maybe it's a sensory thing. But uh, I also specifically like wood tips. I don't like plastic at all. Um I don't like colored sticks like I, the ones that'll rub off on a drum set type of thing. I have I've like I do have a pair of Zildjian. They're like painted yellow. Um, so I, I have them and they're, they're very nice, but those I won't play on my SJC kit. <laughs> those are the ones you, uh, keep to look at. Yeah. They're, they're, they're going to go in probably a shadow box or something, probably give them away or play a show and then throw them out. I'll, I'll make something fun for it. I like that idea. Um, now I got to ask you the important part. What bass drum pedal do you use? Cause I use a, I'm, what'd you say? I'm sorry, I said uh, I use a Tama Speed Cobra. I'm also sorry, I set up my, my camera a little weird. I can't see you, so it's, it's a little hard. I'm, I'm like looking at the back of my phone. Um, my, front, my front camera was not working. It wasn't giving me an option to like turn it around or anything, or right. maybe I'm looking where it is. Um, so it's a little tough to even like gauge if it is. If you're just like looking at me or anything, you're good, bro. Hey, man, uh, it, you look great, and that's what matters. Thank you. You look great, too. I don't have to see you to know that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Big but, time, uh, awesome. Uh, you use Thomas? Thomas Speed Cobra. Um, for when I, I, I have a, like, I have my SJC kit, which, um, that's where I'll play, obviously, any show. That's the Thomas Speed Cobra that I prefer for the live setting. That's been my pedal for five or seven years. I just I, I maintain it. I'll I'll change out the beaters. Um, but as far as my e kit goes, when I practice, I use all DW hardware. I have a DW three thousand hi hat stand and a DW two thousand set of uh, pedals. They are like the cheaper line but because it's my acoustic kit they they hold their own i i couldn't say a bad thing about either the 2000s or the 3000s um they i've had this kit for like a year or two now and all the hardware's held up perfectly hey man as long as it holds up that's what matters yeah you got some upcoming shows you got a big upcoming show more specifically um yeah. just... very excited for this. We're playing with Motionless and Alpha Wolf. Um we couldn't be more stoked. It's on Halloween. We might dress up, we might might do a little something fun. Okay. Who knows? Have some tricks up our sleeves for it. Well, I'm sure I'll see a video and I'll be looking to your Instagram to see what kind of cool costumes you guys are gonna be putting on or whatever. Hell yeah. How does it feel to be playing with Motionless and uh, Alpha Wolf? It feels incredible. We've all grown up fans, honestly. I've I've seen Motionless as early as 
I don't know, 2013, 2014. I don't know. I, I remember seeing seeing them on their first album cycle. I remember seeing them at, I think it was 2015 Warp Tour. I think that was the last time I had seen them for quite a while until uh, Deadlands formed. We got to see them at uh, the Hulu Theater in New York. That's where Casey got to uh, sing with Chris and everything. She more, more, more so screamed, but uh, yeah. she went up to Waterhouse and did that. Um, but it, it's amazing. They're all really nice guys. Like they tr they treat us great. Um, we could we couldn't be like happier and more stoked to play it. I man, that's fantastic that you guys are getting to play. That's a theater of living arts in Pennsylvania, right? Yes, it's uh, I've heard it's a smaller, big theater. As how like people say, it's not like a huge theater, but it's not like a shoebox of a room. I think it's a thousand cap, which to me sounds pretty big. Um, but I'm also used to playing two, three, four hundred cap rooms. Um, but I, I'm I'm super excited. Our one of our favorite tour dates um was in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I think it was called HMAC was the venue. Yeah. Um Dr. and that was that was one of our favorite uh tour dates that that's actually where we had the most people we had more than our new york date which we thought was incredible so a lot of love to pennsylvania and we're so excited to come back hey man well that show's gonna be fantastic but uh you know louder than life just happened and i gotta ask you how was it um incredible <laughs> that was one of the, one of if not my favorite experiences not only as a musician or the drummer of deadlands like just in life like that was if if there's video of either that or blue ridge you're watching me drum with probably a crazy sinister grin on my face i was like just so happy to be playing like it, it probably looked weird honestly but i was smiling and just i i couldn't even take it in there was like rows of people just singing our songs and like I've only attended festivals. We've been, like before those two, we've never played them. Like no one in the band has ever done something like that besides Casey playing with uh motionless and white. Um, but it was so surreal. Good. What day did you guys play again? We played Saturday of louder than life, which was really nice. It was um, like in the middle um, of the festival it wasn't like a bad day or anything like that. It was like good weather. Um, for Blue Ridge, we played the Thursday. And I know, unfortunately, that whole thing kind of went down in flames. <laughs> but um, we got to play. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> down in water, yeah. Um, but it was, it was two insane festivals. Louder Than Life was... I we enjoyed it. I'd say even more. It was just an incredibly ru well run festival. Like the, the whole thing was like from from the from the beginning, like getting like parking and artist passes and just stuff. Like just from the very beginning to the, the hospitality, the food, just like the the art the artist end of things. Like it was it was very well run. Um, and I'm, I, I heard a lot, like even like my friends who attended the festival, like it was just very well run. Um, we'd love to come back and play it again. I'm sure they'll ask you guys to come back after your awesome performance. I've seen videos of it. You're yeah. rocking it out there. Uh, did you stay for the whole weekend? Did you get to see anybody you were happy to see? Um, we did not stay the whole weekend, but we got to see a lot of bands. We were really excited about, um, so asking Alexandria, um, I wanted to see Memphis Mayfire really bad, but we ended up playing at the exact same time as them. Uh, we got to see Sleep Token, uh, who are incredible. Um, That's two times kind of, you've seen them at festivals, right? Yeah, yeah th there was the only two times any of us like in Deadlands have seen Sleep Token were those two festivals, which was insane not only did we see them we could say we played like the same festival which is nuts they're that is so nuts. talented they are and the thing is we may never know who they are and that i think that's even more incredible 
I love it. Uh, so you were there Saturday and Sunday then? We, yeah, Sunday we left, but yeah, it was Saturday and Sunday. Cool. So that's amazing. And it from what I'm looking at here, it was a fantastic lineup. I mean. Incredible. I wish I could have stayed the whole weekend, honestly. It was, it was really, really well organized, like lineup wise. It was I, w- I would have loved to be there for the whole thing. If only I could have transferred my tickets from Blue Ridge that because I see Suicide Silence on here. You know, I see Jesus Peace, who I saw at um Furnace Fest. Gina, wow. Jesus Peace was on the stage we played. They uh they headlined our stage. Okay. Yeah. They're a great lineup. So everyone on our stage was ve- very not only talented, but like genuinely nice and like cool people. Like just like there's a little tent behind where all the artists kind of could talk and everyone was just very welcoming. Um, like all, all the bands on, on there. That's great to hear. Cause you know, you know what they say? You never know about some artists. Some of them are real crappy people when you actually meet them, but I'm glad everybody was good. Uh, yeah, I have- wondered how Jesus piece was. So that's cool. Yeah, they're they're sick. They're they're a really sick band. There's a band uh we met. Um, we we've known them for a while. Um, I personally met the band uh, Kissing Candace. We played with them at Louder Than Life. They were really nice people. They put on a sick set. So shout out Kissing Candace. Go check them out. So I gotta ask about playing at festivals and stuff. What's your in ear mix like? Um, I have, I have a very unconventional uh mix so i think at least my mix is just the spotify version of the song in both ears i have click running in left and right um i have our tracks in there um it, it's base. it's basically just the spotify version our extra um like show effects so like risers um things like that and then the only other thing in my ears, um, I make my own like cues, which a lot of artists do. Yeah. Um, but it'll literally just be me going like chorus two, three, four before a big chorus. If we're doing like something extended, that's not nor- normally in the song. Um, just things like that. Um, in my ear, I'll hear before a song starts like dead weight one, two three and it'll like count in the song and stuff like that but all it really is is the spotify version of the song um for for the songs that we play like as as is that we don't extend or anything like that or play at different tempo um the click and then just my own little cues to let me know what song's coming next and how much time i have in between songs so if i finish a song it'll it'll say like dead weight 45 seconds and then right before the song comes in it'll say dead weight one two and kind of count me in um that's just a little something i i keep because in the live setting you're so involved with watching people sing or can mosh or something that sometimes it, it gets a little distracting so i'll have cues stuff like that but nothing major in my ears it's just like the version of the song that's out that's really what's in my ear that kind of just play, playing along to it. Hey, I was I was wondering because I was like, are you do you have Casey and CJ in your ears? Nope. Or... I have no Casey, I have no CJ. I don't even have my own drums in my ears, which I think is very frowned upon, which I also understand the other side of things. Um, but I I've, I've had my own drums and sometimes it's a latency issue, sometimes it's just too much to hear it in like the the volume levels and stuff get a little wonky um so i just i just keep it very simple i don't put my own drums i don't put either of them in um it's just this the actual song basically playing in my ears like it's like just we just drag in the mp3 of our song to the click and that's what i'm hearing for the most part that's pretty cool and you were right that is pretty unconventional I haven't heard many people just 
throw the MP3 in there. And a lot of people ask, like, like why why I would do it. But growing up, when I would practice drums, that's how I would practice. I would put in headphones, like my in ears or like Apple earbuds, whatever, and I would I would play to my music with uh, play my drums to the music. And for ten plus years, that's how I practiced. So it felt very natural to be in a live setting to just play to the song. I've never thought of it that way. I think I might start doing it that way because that it's there are reasons to and not to do it. Like for instance, you can't you don't know your own levels. Like you don't know, am I playing too loud? Because you're 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 so muffled by the the sound of the music. So it's it's definitely a, not a learning curve, but it it might feel different. You might not know you're playing louder or softer once just like the mp3 or whatever is playing behind you but it's it's something i'd i'd have people try out um who play live it's it's different yeah uh that's something that was on my mind all day i'm like what is his in-ear mix like because i've heard so many people talk about it or i've not heard a lot of people talk about it which is why i had to ask so now i gotta ask you and I know you touched on a little bit, but you said something about new music. Yeah, and uh, it's just um, no no set release date on anything right now. But we've been writing a ton. People have been asking for a lot, and uh, very soon we're gonna deliver on that. Good, because I know you guys are uh, running House of Cards on Sirius XM Octane. Yeah, that was that was a very uh, big move for us. So it was or we're we're stoked um big shout out to jose of course um serious xm liquid metal octane um it, it just it's incredible they uh they they play the track a few times a day or at, at least once and we we couldn't be more like grateful for it it's uh it's been really cool getting to say we're like officially on the radio it's it's cool it is pretty cool and I got to give a shout out to the metal ambassador, Jose Mangan. I love hearing him say that every time <laughs> on Sirius XM. So he's so, I don't know, like he's always got a smile on his face. He's always positive and he's just, he's been very great to us. So we appreciate him. Is he, uh, is he as nice as he uh, seems to be? Yeah, 100%. Good. I I hope to meet him sometime. Maybe even have him on the podcast. Hit him up and see what he says. Let's he take the shot. Yeah, that's the least that could happen. Is uh, he don't respond or he says no? Move on. Yeah. So I gotta ask you, any shows you guys haven't announced that you got coming up? Uh, we do have some shows in the works. We uh we haven't announced them, but after uh after the Halloween show, we might have a. Uh, some announcements coming soon good i hope one of them's down here so uh i'll take you guys around uh north carolina show you all the good places to eat thank you when uh whenever we're there we'll uh we'll take you up on it sounds good to me so toward the end of uh the podcast i like to do something a little fun we can do one we can do both it's up to you i like to do top five movies because i'm a movie guy i'm a big movie guy and i gotta ask top five movies and then we can do that dream festival i've been telling you about um oh for movies i'm not a movie buff everyone asks like oh, what's your favorite movie like like you're asking for five i don't know if i can name a favorite movie there's been a few movies i've seen recently like what's that it? i can name out to me i wouldn't call them favorites but um three recent watches apartment 1br was it was mentally like i don't know it was it it was it was i, I don't want to say that it was it was about basically brainwashing in in, in broadest terms without s spoiling the movie but it it screws with your your head a lot it was a lot of a lot of messed up scenes, but it, it it that was a really good movie. Um, 
one movie I saw recently was called Assassination Nation. That was really good. Um, I think that's a good Halloween October uh, movie as well. And then I might coin this as my favorite movie right now because I can't think of a a movie I like more. But I I love this movie called Hush. They just took it off Netflix like very recently because I've I've seen it probably eight eight or nine times, and uh, I couldn't find it recently. Um, but Hush, that's a really good movie. It's short. I I think it's under an hour and a half. So it might be classified as a shorter film or a short film. Um, but it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's scary, your mind, mysterious. It's, it's, it's the whole plot's really good. It's, it's a really good movie. It's, it's another good, like October movie, I would say. I've seen uh one BR and I've seen Hush and I gotta agree with you, man. Those are some all I have to say is standing there against the wall, I couldn't do it. Yeah, no, like it's it's the movies that like it's not a jump scare type of scare. It's the like the mental shit like that that makes it scary. It's Yeah, it's it's all about the psychological, not the the jump, yeah. jump scare it's very mind hitting now that i've plugged your brain about movies i gotta ask you about the dream festival so this is a fun little game i think you'll enjoy it the, the idea dream- i have yeah. all prepared for you you do <laughs> i do have a lot of what's on here has been um kind of mentioned already to you um and i kind of broke it up like by stage and everything um obviously we would have bands like a day to remember bring me the horizon i prevail bear tooth day seeker silverstein that that would be your more metalcore-esque stage i would think deadlands could fit somewhere on there hopefully um got to i'll put you right in the middle um and then also on that stage would be bands like Spearbox, Make Them Suffer, and Wage War. Um, all these bands, again, are bands we, we all love and have talked about, just wanting to play with, wanting to do anything with. Um, again, I love pop punk, so I'd probably have a whole stage of bands like Movements, Knuckle Pucks, Story So Far, um state champs they're from new york um much love to them um we would have the the more i, I don't i don't want to put all these artists in in the same box uh because nothing nowhere is a little different but nothing nowhere black bear kenny hoopla mod son girlfriends um bands like that um yeah that would basically all all those bands and then tons more of just of that that variety those those were like the two stages i kind of had back and forth like the the heavier stages and the the pop punk and the uh i love it. i will i will 1000% be there i'll i'll even be your uh your stage organizer i'll be like you're going over there and you're going over there to that stage uh, cause you're pop punk, you know, it sounds like a fantastic festival. Yeah. These are just, you know, probably, I'd probably just listen like my top 20 most listened to band slash artists. Um, they're all, they're all influences. They're all bands I listen to daily that I, I'd, I'd want to work with type of thing. Well, and. In this dream festival, you can work with every single one of them if you want. You can be at every single stage at once. It does not matter. So, and then now we got to ask you some of the the nitty gritty stuff. Where is it going to be? It can be anywhere in the world. It doesn't have to be a specific venue. Just think of a place and be like, that's where I want it. I would probably have it be like a. Ooh. I know it's a tough question, ain't it? Tough question. Um, hmm. Ideally, 
I would love it to take place in New York because that's my home state. Um, but I also know that's not like, I, I couldn't think of a place that we'd have a festival grounds and I know I'm looking too, too much into it. Um, Las Vegas has a beautiful festival grounds. That's where I went to see uh, when we were young festival, not this past weekend, but last year. Um, that that was an amazing festival. That that basically was most of the dream festival I just named. That was uh, so many bands and artists I liked. That that was a day to remember. Bring the horizon. I think I prevail played that. Um, Kenny Hoopla played it when I saw it. Pierce the Veil played it. Like so many big bands all at once. Paramore, My Cam. It was just uh, that was an insane festival. So my my dream festival is pretty close to the original when we were young fest. Um, sorry about the Saturday kids, um, but hey, yeah, that sounds uh, great festival for you guys to play at. I would be honored. I would I would sell my soul to play when we were young. I don't even think you'll have to do that. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> they hear this so you can uh, hop on. As I love that. For, have they already locked it in for next year or have they said anything yet? Do you know? No, I I genuinely don't know. I do know that after when we were young happened last year. So like I attended the festival, I believe within two weeks of me attending that festival, the lineup for this year dropped. So I'm assuming that whatever is next year, like is planned or in the works like like almost done because after the first festival this festival came out like right after i was like shocked i was like oh my god like we just attended the first festival it might have even come like like the next like before or, or the day of like i remember being shocked that, that the next year was already announced it was it was very close to the the festival date, like the original festival date. Well, I don't see anything for twenty twenty four, so you know. Oh, I don't think. Yeah, I just saw today that they actually put up something, um, asking you to like say what band you want to see next year. Oh well, I'll be putting you guys on there. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you guys would fit in perfect. Uh. You got well, movements on there, which I love. Movements. You got yellow card on there. Rise against Blink One Eighty Two. I hope they play again, so you can go and meet them. Oh my god, that'd be a dream come true. Hey, I mean you. You said you like Travis Barker, so getting yeah. to meet him sounds like it would be a great uh opportunity. I have one more little fun story. Guarantee Travis Barker does not remember this call, but about four years ago, I was recording in a studio um, and he had been working with the engineer um, at the time and he he called and uh, at the time I got to speak to Travis Barker. Quick phone call wasn't like some mind blowing shit, but I, I did speak to him briefly on a phone call once, which is another little fun story. I get to tell people that I met Travis Barker. Hey, I... I would count it as meeting Travis Barker. That's pretty cool. It was it was very cool for me at the time. Like I said, it wasn't much of a phone call. It wasn't he wasn't calling me or anything like that. I just it was a little thing where he called and then we were kind of like, oh yeah, we'd love to say hi, type of thing. Well, yeah, I saw your Halloween merch because I I got to bring up uh, merch for you guys. I saw you yes, got some Halloween stuff out. Looks sick. Yeah, we love the design. Um, everything on our merch store, we've designed ourselves. Like the original merch store, not the Halloween, but everything else you see was like literally in like this room right here, like my basement. We, we just sit here. We design the merch. CJ does a lot of graphic design. Um, so I got to give him the most credit. He designed all the Halloween merch. Um, so he he just like he drew up the little like the bat the jack-o'-lantern it was just like little stuff that that i don't know i really like the merch too i i i thought it came out great we all we all loved it and we hope all of you love it well i gotta say i definitely love the um merch here i like the uh the tie-dye thing you got going on with some of your merch here that we uh 
and tie dye. We actually, <laughs> like we we fiz- like we also get some of our own merch and we'll buy it just because we like it. And we shot a video yesterday, unrelated to the merch, but um, before we shot the video, we were um like our cameraman he had ordered merch, so we we're giving him some of the stuff and. Um, it was a blue tie dye, the the Deadlands embroidered shirt, and that might be my favorite like piece of merchandise I've ever like owned or seen. Like I just really love it. Um, I know it's biased, but like even if it said whatever band on it, like a day to remember, Dayseeker, whatever it would say, like I would say that's the coolest piece of merch. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, we just recently got, um a brand of sacrifice tie dye one for like oh yeah bucks on their website and yeah, it's, it is fun. is insane and then i'm still waiting on my we came as romans hoodie <laughs> hell yeah did I'm, you go to the dog tour and see them play that together i have not seen them play yet they're playing this sunday oh hell yeah i'm going to try to go see them cuz you know, you got We Came as Romans, you got Immur, you got Archetypes Collide, who I found out about about a year ago, and I've been following them loosely since then. And yeah, same. I saw them. They uh, opened for a band called Secrets that I really like, and I didn't know them much at the time, just like one or two songs that were on my Spotify. Um, but I ended up catching two guitar picks at that show. Not just one, but two. That oh, I caught one and one I found on the floor. But like I, I had two of them, and like it wasn't like he threw it and I, I immediately got it. It was like he, the first one I caught, and at the very end of the show, I was about to leave, and I like felt something under my like shoe, and I was like stepping on the little guitar pick. So I have them both upstairs. I can um, remember that caught. <laughs> but uh, they're they're on I think part two of their tour on the. We came as Romans tour the the original one. They had Brand of Sacrifice open for them, no. so he had come up for their like other rendition of Dark Bloom. It was it was really cool. Man, that such a missed opportunity. I've been missing all the good shows. I missed the Metalcore Dropouts one with Landmark. <laughs> hey guys, sorry to cut things short. Uh, Kyle's phone happened to die, so our only sense of communication was dropped out for the call um i'd like to thank kyle for coming on the podcast it was a great time and i know i hope he had as much as i did because i had a lot of fun chatting with him and learning more about the band um you can find kyle at kyle o'brady's that's k-y-l-e-o-b-r-a-i-t-i-s um on Instagram and on TikTok, you can find Deadlands in several different places. You can find them on their website, deadlandsband.com. You can find their merch at deadlandsmerchstore.com. You can find their Instagram at deadlandsband, and as well as each individual person, uh, Casey and CJ, at their official Instagrams as well. Um, you can look that up on the Deadlands website because running out of breath here but uh again i'd like to thank kyle for uh coming on the podcast